Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm Javier Proenza, and today my guest is Cynthia Lujan. Thank you for, for coming on. Yeah. You just had a show at uh, Norco, what is it? Norco Community College. Nice. Yeah, it's part of the Riverside um, Community Colleges, I believe. An artist that you recently interviewed, I think, was part of the podcast, too. Which one? Um, their last name is Victor. I can't remember their first name. Oh, Christina. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, actually, you know what? She did do a show there. Uh, she did the Grief and Color show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I went to check out the closing reception for that, too. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, yeah, I like. she's funny because she's Cuban and we're from the same era of Miami. And it like feels like I've known her my whole life. But oh, I cool. just met her podcasting like maybe two years ago. Oh, cool. It speaks to the um, the cultural things that you may be like overlook when you're a kid you're like oh i'm from miami but then you're like oh no i'm from miami <laughs> yeah yeah did you grow up out here i did here in um 562 area for sure what's 562 is that an area uh, code area code yeah oh, okay. so like um southeast la south bay long beach okay um but yeah i grew up in norwalk california oh so. norwalk okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah what was it like growing up there how did you get into art where were, were those roots let's get that origin story sure <laughs> origin story <laughs> yeah, yeah um yeah i uh started off in high school definitely i had a really supportive um a uh, group of high school teachers that were um, supporting me in my art practice and you know before this I wanted to be a nurse and go into medicine really um yeah you know and, what I feel like you would have very good uh, bedside manner and or <laughs> be a lawyer which is very different <laughs> um I still so, get the inclination so to do that part cutthroat and part uh nurturing 100 <laughs> percent. that's basically both sides to the coin for sure yeah because I can say like you were saying that you were soft-spoken when we were setting up the mics and I was like and yeah. actually just sitting here and listening to your voice I'm like oh it's very soothing <laughs> uh, people always say that really okay yeah. so I'm not just making shit up no, to flatter you <laughs> I should totally become a voice actor you then. should that you do have a very Hell good yeah. voice uh okay so then in high school what kind of uh, are were you were you like were you the kid that did yeah. cartoons were you the kid that did no. commissions for friends like what 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 was your uh, specific like interest? photographer oh yeah. okay yeah i actually started off in photo at cal state long beach and okay. then transitioned to painting um and yeah I, I still to this day take a lot of photos and consider it part of my um, part of my app art practice, but more of like the prelimination aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, cause the stuff you have in the show is a lot of, uh, uh works on paper. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Um, probably 65, 75% of it's works on paper and then works on panel. Oh, nice. Um, I started acrylic. working on panel too and I love it now. Ugh. <laughs> I love working on paper and panel. I don't like the teeth of canvas. For these, I didn't, I just went rogue and just, you know, gessoed uh, to the edge of like where a border would be. Uh -huh. And I'm just like really loose with it. I'm like, you know what? Let's so that, do this. <laughs> so then, so before we get into what the content, what, what the conceptual stuff that you're doing For in, sure. in the show. Uh, so as a kid, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get like, oh, yeah. what was the first intro to art? Definitely uh, photography. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, no, never mind. You did say that. <laughs> I started taking photos of um, some of my friends who were uh, writers and also like was in yearbook and took all the photos, like candid photos of all the staff nice. in black and white. I was like photo editor. <laughs> um, so that was kind of like inception, I guess. And then. Did you ever get into color in college? Uh, like painting or. No, or color just, photography. Um, or, or, did yeah, it, or was it mostly digital by the time? It was all digital yeah, by yeah, then. Yeah. That's um, not as fun. But I learned, you know, like 35 millimeter medium format, large format. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, printed large format at Cal State too. So familiar with that, but that was more of like in college for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we did, we did black and white in high school, but then when I got to college, that's when I started. I, that's when I fell in love with something that immediately got like just dissipated, which was printing color on RC <sighs> paper with the RC machine. And I, and I just miss that. And like, I miss color correcting in, yes. in like in vivo instead of having to be like on a computer and stuff like that. So I totally, <sighs> I, 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 I feel like you were denied something by not having access to the color. That sucks. 100%. I mean, I definitely printed test prints in color and 
we saw the process of a demo to like color correct, but never, never got to do it. Dove into it. Yeah. yeah I got and, so good at it. And that's actually why I ended up moving and shifting from photo as a major into painting is because I did not want to be on a computer 24 seven. And this I was is why like, I ask about the yeah. art origins. That's exactly it's what happened totally to me. True. Yeah. Yeah. So, and computers are so expensive and digital cameras yeah. are much more expensive that like, because you have to buy an expensive body and a uh, and the lens instead yeah. of just like some simple thing so then what the, when you started to make the transition so do you do you still feel like you think in a very photographic sense oh yeah okay. absolutely and um what do you what, I try I to source all of my my content imagery on my own mm -hmm. um especially with all these portraits i take all the photos of my friends and subjects um so yeah mm -hmm. do you 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 paint from reference I am. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Usually fifty millimeter. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Wow. So portraits. Fifty millimeter. What's it called? The the lens is fifty yeah. millimeter. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I was like, wait, that's actually a pretty small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> small square. Go, go ahead. It's like restrictive because you have to kind of really get up to your subject, or yeah, yeah. if you want to have them in full frame, you know. So you don't have the point five like on the iPhone. No, you can, like, there's too much warping and yeah, yeah. shift of like yeah yeah bad like news it. is that that camera right the middle camera right there yeah. is is gonna have a lot of warping. for sure i mean you <laughs> do what you can with what you have <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. okay and then so thematically when did you start so it i, I there's I, I i appreciate the pragmatic reasoning behind it but there's probably also you're more interested in one thing now than the other thing right uh so like what was it that started to draw you into into the actual extra step of making your photographs yeah uh, drawings and paintings so i definitely don't exhibit the photographs mm -hmm. um i hardly even show them to anyone and i like that um aspect of it i feel like that time with um my subject or whom i'm making a portrait of is really intimate and mm -hmm. i'm like you know you end up seeing the final piece and the result but really it's yeah something i don't share really mm -hmm. and so um Making that final piece is definitely, it, it was pretty cool. Last Thursday, we had our open reception um, at Norco, and um, I was able to talk a lot about the series. And um, it's really like an exploration of color, exploration of like energy, exploration of um, like the perception of seeing others, of mm -hmm. being seen. Um, yeah. Which is interesting to start that off through a, a lens, right? Because a mm -hmm. lot, especially now in the contemporary life experience yeah quotidian life i love saying that i love that word too <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah like uh, it's almost mm -hmm. like photography you know like when i was a kid there were a lot of prints around and now everything is on screens but the lens is still a really important thing because mm -hmm. we're looking at pretty much everybody's life through a lens and right? it's a filter it's, yeah it has bias it yeah, has yeah. you know a specific angle figuratively and literally that you're looking through the world or looking at the world through. So you're doing portraiture. Yeah. And, um, it's ahead. one facet of what I but do in, in the current, in the current, in show, current, in the current show. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess then the broader question would be what, how do you pick your subject matter and what yeah. you document, uh, with your camera? Um, for that series specifically, uh, I was looking at folks who, um, ride on wheels through public spaces or travel through public spaces um, and through alternative uh, modes of mobility than a car. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, roller skaters, cyclists, bicyclists, um, scooterers, <laughs> bladers, <laughs> uh, there's skateboarders. A, there's still bladers around? I'm a blader. Oh, I didn't mean it as an insult. I just thought it had, it had fun. Roller I thought it was skate a, is so hard. Yeah, like, roller I skating can't do is it. Hard. Yeah, the trucks, man, they throw you off because they start to, they, they, yeah. the, the skates go wherever they want if you're not like balancing yourself on them. Correctly. Yeah, so rollerblading's a little bit easier for me. <laughs> uh huh. So then, so the the subject matter is based on your, your picking, rollerblading, all of that. And um, a lot of friends, um, a couple of friends from this group, um, in Santa Ana called Twig that mm. um, we all meet up and uh, fix our bikes or go on bike rides or hang out together mm. and like learn more about bikes and biking um, is and there creating a big, community. Is there a big overlap between artists and that community? Yeah. yeah so a lot of them are artists. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And we have like a zine out that went out last year and working oh, cool. on the second one this year. What's um, it called? Um, the last one was called Taking the Lane. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you, you, you also did a public thing, a public works thing. So it seems like yeah. you're, you have like a, last conti- week. yeah, last week. So you, it seems like you have a contingent of people that are active community support that you, you interact with, but I don't recognize any of them. So it, it just, it always reminds me how big the art world is. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, and actually was the fact doing... that you know, Christina is, or that you are aware of Christina is such a, like mm-hmm. outside of my general circle, uh, crossover so go ahead sorry yeah i just recently met her so yeah, yeah, yeah. um i'm not too acquainted with her myself. i mean i i, I basically <laughs> but, know her about as much as you do but yeah. it just feels like i've known her a while cool yeah um yeah as far as like the community spaces that i uh belong to and um i have the privilege of belonging to right because it's like it's one thing to like go somewhere but it's another thing to like feel like you're a part of it and included um are kind of that's a very art, good point. Are adjacent, but not necessarily like the main center of it. And okay. I really made that like conscious decision, maybe like, I don't know, 2018 ish, 17, because I just felt like the art world was really like gallery and sell. And, you mm-hmm. know, s- sales are the only way you can make it. And I'm just like, man, this seems really like we're all like pitting against each other. Yeah. yeah. And, I don't know. I was like, I think there's another way. And I really like working in community. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, yeah, I've I've been volunteering for this organization called Santa Ana Active Streets um, and have been, uh, you know, uh, going to events and um, organizing and volunteering at events, too. We just had a um, community bike ride during the rain, rain or shine on Saturday and um, uh, went to a uh, urban farm to go learn about composting and then rode back together and um yeah i don't know i wanted to focus more on like things outside of just creating for like exhibit mm-hmm. and collection and uh you know maybe museum collection i i kind of tend to think that museums are mausoleums mm-hmm. and you know oh things, my god you just quoted uh things, what's his name um uh, uh tomaso Mar- marinetti or no wait what are the, the one of the futurists he said that like he said exactly mm-hmm. that the, like museums are mausoleums he was talking about italian yeah. art that was like christian and old during the fascist period in italy but it that's <laughs> but it's a fair yeah. it's a fair i mean he not everything he said was crazy and you know i i do believe in preservation preservation of culture and preservation of ideas and um values and history and i'm not like anti you know archivist no, no, no. No, I, I if anything i'm quite the opposite um but uh yeah i don't know i like public art i do a lot of public art um i like working in community i think really the do you do, you do like requests for qualifications and stuff like that um Sometimes. sometimes most okay. of it has been like i've i've supported or volunteered mm-hmm. um as an artist assistant that's kind of led to things i've like participated in like art walks and stuff and then those kind of led to like opportunities Which, the one in long beach yeah okay. mm-hmm. and then um uh yeah like just working on the ground like you know um like in santa Ana, that crosswalk project it's two years in the making like uh two years ago there was an event where um it was a traffic safety fair Mm -hmm. and um folks were asked what they would want to see in the community as far as like different um uh things that were pitched to them at that event and a crosswalk was one of them so um you know i'd have been volunteering there for a while and had pitched some artwork it went through some feedback and then redone and yeah, the installation was um, this last Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, I forget. I don't know. Last week <laughs> was that. Was that a, you? A, you you headed up the project, or was was I, it collaborative? Or I designed the crosswalk. You designed yeah. the crosswalk, and it was um, thermoplastic installed. So it's like plastic that's like heated into the asphalt. Oh, okay. Uh huh. What, my... What's the significance of that? Is it is it uh, longer lasting? It's longer lasting. Okay, yeah. so it's it's and not... less labor intensive to my body. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. we're we'll always support uh, cutting corners <laughs> on this podcast. No, I'm kidding. That's not what I meant. Uh, it's working smart, not hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a different process. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. And then so 
did you have you uh, you you texted me you had a specific um topic that you wanted to discuss is that the, or, or we yeah. can or if you want to veer off from that that's okay too i'm I just, cool with veering off okay. um but that was just general stuff like so what was you know, it my, i forget i forgot too but basically like you know uh most of my work deals with public spaces. Okay. Um, I've been revisiting this portraiture series because maybe 10 years ago I did this portrait of a skater and I was working with like social archetypes. Um, mm-hmm. So like, you know, the skater, the gamer, mm-hmm. the guitarist, the, Dude, like, you know what you were saying, <laughs> you know what you were saying about like earlier, like in high school, which one were yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. those are kind of like archetypes, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Characters in a way. And, um, I was doing, I started the series traces, um, kind of doing portraits of people where you almost could insert yourself or insert someone you knew into it. And those are actually on view also with the larger portraits to Mm -hmm. kind of give it more context. Um, but that one skater portrait that I did, I was like, all right, I'm going to dive more into, um, specifically, um, people in public spaces. And I asked, um, people to really wear what they wanted to wear and how like they felt the most comfortable in like being represented and representing themselves and being seen. And like, whether Mm. that means like your hair clips, rings, necklaces, socks, yeah, you know, shoelace color, reflective jacket, my reflective jacket, (laughs) the only green uh, (laughs) Uggs I've ever seen. (laughs) Yeah. Basically, you know, so, um, what shirt are you wearing under that? Just it's my shirt actually. Oh, nice. Well, I'm glad I asked then. That's (laughs) a very cool shirt. It's a traffic cone. Oh, it's a, it's a street sign of a traffic cone. Pixelated. Pixelated. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um i might do another run i don't know i really like the black on black i think it's cool how did you th- how did you print those is, the, is that screen printing two print two, two layers yeah oh okay cool like a fluorescent orange and then the black gla- nice. gloss on top That's yeah well executed uh Thanks. so that no well i see what you're saying especially when you when when you said that you're interested in public works like Though these are public, outward, space. public space, but uh, the, uh, well, but also public works. works. <laughs> but um, these are, it, it, I mean, you're not putting people in pajamas. You're putting them on their like how they get around and it, yeah. you know their form of transportation, which yeah. is also kind of a personal choice that's expressive. Too, yeah, interesting. You know, mm-hmm. especially like going back to blades. Not always a personal choice, sometimes a personal need and necessity. Yeah, yeah. And definitely in general, like the idea is to advocate for, you know, the most marginalized having to um, travel through public spaces uh, in a way that is dangerous to them because motorists are not as caring and cognizant and empathetic and all of the above living in Southern California. I feel like, you know, innately we know this stuff, but um yeah, so definitely um, uh, representing and making portraits. And I, I would use the word regal portraits, which I know that that sounds like I'm full of myself, but really I feel like... Oh, it's a, I, it's a tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, it's a I'm really tradition. trying to honor people yeah. in ways they want to be seen and, um, you know their and all their regalness and um really centering that joy of like how we enjoy public spaces and enjoy that in community and are able to relate to each other or have like really stellar like individual like you know me time on my own outside like um you know sometimes we do run into people but also like being on wheels you kind of do kind of bypass people a little bit right like so yeah yeah it reminds me the other day i was talking on the phone with my mom and i was walking and i had headphones and this woman was walking next to me and she was matching my exact pace and i was just like all right i <laughs> i sprinted ahead <laughs> i was like you know like it felt like she was like eavesdropping although i don't know i'm not going to uh you know project sinister intention on her but it was just awkward you know yeah. where i was like okay i might as well just sprint because it's like she wasn't slowing down she wasn't speeding up she was just like and you were up. walking yeah and uh-huh. i was walking so I, that just what it would remind me is like yeah it's nice when you don't when you're on your own trajectory you know because mm-hmm. even I, I remember when i used to go i used to go skateboarding with my friend and he's like six four uh-huh. And I'm five eight. So he's going way yeah. faster than you, right? <laughs> he's like leaving me in the yeah. dust the whole time. But yeah, it is also interesting how wheels that are like self 
pro- propelled or like mm-hmm. personal they're tied to, yeah they're they're tied to your your internal engine of what your engine mm-hmm. is getting you know like he would be like a v8 and i'm like you know a four banger yeah <laughs> your inertia i think that's what it's called right? yeah 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 and then uh you would look we would look for the the bearings that could like spin the most and stuff oh yeah so Ugh, i tried learning how to skateboard when i was like what 12 yeah. bought a skateboard that thing was so heavy i'm like who sells this to a beginner <laughs> like man it was yeah. Yeah, I still wish I knew how to skateboard. I feel like it's so it looks so fun and like just to be that aware of like your body and how you're how balanced you are and just being able to catch yourself well like I think it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I I taped with the last guest. His episode came out a week. It hasn't come out yet, but whatever. I recorded on Saturday Mm -hmm. with my friend Alex. And uh, we went afterwards to watch, like, to his house. And we were just watching, like, skateboarding. Nice. And I was like, and there was a dude there that was a an announcer and he was like older than me and i was like when i was a kid that didn't exist like statesmen that had like gray hair uh-huh. skateboarders so just that whole scene is funny and i just think it's hilarious that we were like hanging out having beers watching like yeah <laughs> like old times basically right <laughs> yeah like, well no the kids were like super young they were they're like in their 20s i was like no but like you watching skaters yeah. like i feel like that's definitely what i used to do when i was a kid too yeah. so i don't know did you did you watch a lot of uh skating videos and stuff not videos but my friends skateboard Uh yeah my house was kind of the spot where friends would come over and skate off the curb so (laughs) nice yeah did you were you have you ever like been the kind of person to strap on rollerblades and do crazy flips on ramps because i've seen people do that and i'm like no man i feel like it's dweeb for riding a skateboard like especially on on quads i see people do stuff and i'm like whoa i know their knees man yeah how are they doing that i I don't don't know know, man (laughs) (laughs) that's wild no i mean i've i've watched some skating like uh roller skating videos for sure what was yeah. that? Yeah, it's my phone. Oh, that was your phone. I was like, I was just I worried it was one of my cameras. I have the flash on because uh, I always have it on silent, so it's the only way I can find oh, it. Oh, that's cool. It's like a, yeah, accessibility thing on there if you want to change it. So I have a good tip. Um, it's a great tip because, man, that find my phone thing does not work for me sometimes. I don't know why. So then, oh, yeah, no. I, <laughs> we're giving uh, tech reviews now. But Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it just registered what you said and i was i related i was like yeah sometimes it'll tell you that like your earbuds are like somewhere down the street and they're in your car but yeah. um so can we get back a little bit into your sense of uh wanting to stay outside of the art market sure. How, do you interact with like actual artist run community spaces and stuff like that like artist run galleries or are you because you it sounded like you were actually even a step further from that and mostly interacting with maybe non-artists which i think is genius because artists can be insufferable sometimes but uh it where where, where how do you feel about that and like yeah and, you know because you, i mean you're obviously in a museum right like you're showing it what well, is the community the narco the, college yeah that's it, uh it's, it's a gallery it's a gallery yeah. okay it's a gallery. i guess i guess that's right uh um, i've shown at i think i've shown at museums i'm like i don't keep track of my cv very well i feel like <laughs> but yeah i feel like i've shown at the um museum at cal state and i forget where else but um yeah so i definitely during school we started a um informal cal state long beach alumni um called fa4 collective um alumni association like or group right um so we did a lot of projects there that's where i feel like a lot of us learned how to navigate different spaces negotiate um advocate for ourselves advocate for each other you know boost each other up um Mm -hmm. Climb the ladder together, kind of thing. Are you still um, tight with a lot of the those people? Or I am. Okay. Um, it's fa- it's fa- fine if you're not. No, yeah, I am. But um, yeah, it's just you know tough to continue after you know graduating and stuff. Um, to like continue your practice on a more public level. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I I did that. I uh, definitely still want to continue that at some in some capacity in the future. But we just haven't, you know 
had the capacity the pandemic really like screwed up a lot of stuff and, yeah a lot of know, stuff died after the pandemic after that <laughs> including people sadly and yeah, yeah after that like um re-strategizing right like everybody just finding their balance their like center um but uh i did run a um artist-led gallery space as well for about two years year and a half um and curated about like seven or eight shows out of there nice. Lo- loved doing that what was loved it in- curating um in north long beach north long beach mm-hmm. and um uh yeah, I mean, if I had money to blow, I would totally still do that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, definitely spent a lot of my savings on doing that. And I loved it. I mean, I feel like I learned how to conceptualize things a little bit more um, in an abstract way where it wasn't like my work, you know what I mean? And so understanding or perceiving work or interpreting stuff. Um, but um, yeah, that was unsustainable for myself. <laughs> no, I, I know. And, um, so yeah, the like, c- like artist collective thing, the artist led gallery. Um, and yeah, after that, I felt like, you know, I had spent enough time ex- exerting my energy and I needed to like focus on, uh, your you own know, practice, harnessing my practice and, yeah. um, developing my themes and my concepts more and and really investing my time in outside of the art world like like i mentioned so for sure like um uh part, like i'm like an advisory council member for santa Ana active streets um active I, streets that's that's a, a cycling and uh, it's an ad, uh, active transportation advocacy group Active transportation would be non a gas guzzling or not alternatives yeah. to um, motor, co- yeah, to yeah. cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like bus, metro, mm, hybrid, electric, uh-huh. uh, electric bikes. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Self powered stuff, like we we're saying. Um, yeah, and it goes deeper, right? Than just like how you get somewhere. Um, it talks about. Um, safety and access and inclusion in public spaces which is really what i have centered my work around um yeah it it just felt like synchronicity i had my studio in north long beach and simultaneously that gallery right and i had to leave so i found a spot in santa Ana and stayed there for five years and in the middle of that found that organization was just like whoa this is the stuff that i was already making work in and like um doing um memorial projects of to traffic collision victims you know and mm-hmm. like and memorializing people and trying to center joy in that like which sounds contradictive um but uh you know bringing more awareness to like um yeah like even just uh like the inconveniences of of traffic collisions but also the um, dehumanizing and undignified ways that like uh, news and us as people just talk about it like if yeah. it's just like an accident is not you know an accident is like I turned around and you were there and I stepped on your foot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like collisions are are preventable and you know yeah so yeah just working no, more he- centering that aspect into my work and and yeah you know I, I still you know get commissioned to do projects. I still, um, get commissioned to do artworks. I still sell artwork as well, but it's more of like person to person level. And, um, you know, definitely have to put myself out there more. I probably should be doing that more and, um, want us to move more towards that, but it's it's up to what you want your practice to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, not everybody has to go, has to sell to be valid for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not like the, main no, no, focus I, yeah, yeah but yeah. it's just an aspect of it and well um, one of the things that i wanted to say yeah. and because i also feel i feel like again i feel a parallel right where uh the art scene is great but if you live in it entirely it can drive you insane because like it, it's it's yeah. it's not necessarily the real world in some ways right but it also does have like um it's it just ends up being somewhat restrictive in what you can imagine if you if you try to conform too much into into it's making still it work. in some ways like a form of indentured slavery i feel yeah. like well it's one of the like most corrupt how, businesses in the world just for like sure. how like being a 
basketball player or yeah, a baseball yeah. player. Like, I feel like it's very much in those lines yeah, yeah. of work. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I, I wouldn't disagree with that. It, um, what, what I find interesting, though, is that, like, I feel, I guess what I'm saying is I feel like the art world is great, but it is its own bubble. And it sounds like you're stepping outside of it and actually I'm in the periphery. You're in the, well, I mean, you have a foot in for sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be like, you're not, you're, you're an outsider artist, but it seems like you're making deliberate uh, decisions that point, put you in a place where you are interacting more directly with the public that would not necessarily be at every gallery opening kind of thing. And those yeah. people appreciate art too. Right. And, yeah. and, and especially like, it sounds like, what ends up happening, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're inspiring kids more directly because, you know, there's a lot of kids at art openings, but they're usually like kids of artists that are being dragged along, right? Whereas yeah. like in this public era, you know, like some kid might see your your crosswalk and, and mm -hmm. start thinking about stuff, whereas like they're not necessarily going to be hitting a gallery, yeah. you know? I'm getting chills and I don't know if that's like, I feel seen, I guess. Okay, I'm glad. I'm <laughs> so glad. Thank that you. means that I'm doing my um, job listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, accessibility to the arts is definitely important. Um, I feel like luckily I had guidance and like, you know, care and like, stu like uh, supporting my practice and like getting started. But, you know, um, yeah, our, the arts are totally accessible. It is lu very lucrative. Like society is lying to all of us. They actually capitalize on shit ton. Can I curse yeah, on this yeah, podcast? You can, you, cool, because I curse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, as long as it's not in, in is, the first 30 seconds of the podcast, you're good. <laughs> art is very lucrative. Um, yeah. And they're just lying to us about like not being able to make money from it. Mm. Um, but yeah accessibility is super important i also teach at a senior center and have been doing that for six years to You're teaching art older adults yeah i've done um, uh, some of my best mm -hmm. experiences and most learning experiences have been going to uh drawing figure drawing uh, mm -hmm. thing that was uh, where was it it was it in irvine somebody at, at, a, at a community center they were they would just have a weekly one oh, cool. and then my mom heard about it because she's like yeah. a contemporary of theirs and i ended up going and i was like oh my god these guys have such a w different w view of history and stuff so it must be really awesome to, to be a part of that, you know, you, you must get, get, absorb like a sponge, a tremendous amount of perspective. Um, not necessarily like in art history, but no, no, in, in life, in yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, I've gotten some great advice. I'm like, <laughs> man, this is like a life hack here. Like go to your senior center. Like, yeah, yeah. and you know, I've always, since I was a kid been more, um, inclined to like be friends with older people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean like, you know, 20 year difference, 30 year difference, like 50 year difference. I've just always like my dad was born 1925. I was born 1990. You do the math. Mm -hmm. And so I face I saw him and us witness a lot of like age discrimination. And like since I was, I don't know, probably cognizant, I yeah, like yeah. realized that and was just like, this is so weird. This is your dad. Like, that is 1925. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So um, people would always say he's my grandpa or whatever. And yeah. like. Um, so, you know, well, I've just always been inclined to like, just perceive people as people and not as yeah. old or whatever other projections you give off of people who are a different age than you. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with kids. I feel like I don't try to be like, oh, let me alone. Oh, nee, nee, nee. <laughs> like, I'm obviously sometimes se me sale. Like, I'm just like, okay. You're like, like oh. you're too fucking cute. I can't contain it. Like with cats, especially in kittens. But, um. Yeah. yeah, like with kids, like I try to just talk to them like they're people and, um, you know, but yeah. anyway, so, uh, yeah, accessibility to the arts is super important to me and, um, being able to, uh, share skills, um, with, uh, you know, older women, mostly older immigrant women who live by themselves, yeah. um, maybe half, if not more than that are, um, uh, ESL, right? Like English as a second language. Um, and so it's, I don't know, it's cool. I like it. Um, they're like all my abuelitas. Nice, um, nice. I think it's cool. And I, they enjoy it. I also think that it's kind of like for them, it's like going to be 
alone together because mm-hmm. everyone's so like hyper focused on what they're doing. But and then, you know, you, you share a little bit, but most of the time it's not like a loud class. Like everyone's just like you could have done this at home. Yeah. But, no you know. mucho me. Mm, thank goodness no because oh, okay. ooh, you know they had like this anti-bullying sign up at the senior center i was like man i wish they had that up in more space <laughs> like after the pandemic i feel like people forgot how to socialize man yeah, like yeah. dang <laughs> yeah no people people got crazy after the pandemic it's been a hard recovery yeah. especially especially in art spaces i think you know <laughs> and i think a lot of a lot of spaces yeah. got squeezed in a really weird way and then maybe they went a little dark <laughs> yeah <laughs> to survive it's just so hard to find space now yeah like i I got displaced from my studio in Santa Ana last June because they supposedly sold the property. We're selling the property. And um, I it took me like six months to find a new spot. And wow. And, you know, I'm picky. Right. So I wanted certain things. I didn't want dust on my drawings. I didn't want. I mean, that's kind of important. I mean, it is, <laughs> but it's, you'd it's be hard. surprised. Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised how hard it is. <laughs> and like, you know, I'm not paying like half my paycheck a month or something. Like, yeah. um, you're paying, you're using that for rent. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's how that's how life is nowadays. I was making a joke. I wasn't calling you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's just hard. It's, it's tough being an artist right now. No, it it's is. Tough. It definitely is. But it seems like you have found your like your modality of working and your yeah. space where you're happy working, which is interesting. Because yes. I mean, I'm trying to branch out, and I'm trying, you know, for the show, uh, for 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 all of that. I'm interested in all the different ways that people can be an artist, right? Mm-hmm. I spent maybe a little too much time. I feel like early on in the in the artist run scene. I feel like now I'm a little bit interested in, I mean, I still go to them, you know, I love last projects and stuff like that. And I, I, I'm still actively involved in, in, you know, artist curated shows and artist run spaces, but well, it's beauty. The beauty ahead. of that is that you really are able to have a lot, have an opportunity to have your work crit, crit, crit yeah, critiqued yeah. Um, for feedback. Yeah. I mean, it's, Otherwise, if, I mean, if you have the privilege of going to school, you don't realize it until after. I feel like most people that that's really your opportunity. Like you're already working like mm-hmm. it's at school. You like you're able to just get like qualitative feed. Usually, qu- hopefully qualitative. Sometimes uh, <laughs> there's also part cr- of the reason why I haven't gone to grad school is because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, what if I don't like the cohort? Like, that's the main thing I yeah, feel yeah. like. And like, you and I know can't a lot of that. people that don't talk to their cohort. Dude, you know, I, I think mean, of that's that the main t- thing. Like, yeah. I, I feel so grateful and privileged that throughout my whole time at Cal State Long Beach, which I stayed for seven and a half years. No worries. <laughs> on purpose. On I, purpose. I, I, I'm also a, various a, cohorts. I am also a doctor of uh, BFA art. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, like so grateful for all the interactions, feedback, um, you know, exchange. Like, I think that's the best part of going to school. But and again, it's kind of an ex- I feel like the artist run spaces are an extension of that. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's one of the ways to find community. But I but that's what I'm saying. Like what I like, you know, I've I've covered that a lot. But what I like is that you found your own way of making your own sort of community that caters to that need to have community and uh, within creative spaces but maybe is not um it sounds to me like it's not as uh clout chasey kind of you know not not it like not that i mean i'm chasing clout i i don't i don't want to say it as like a a pejorative or anything like that but that also drains me you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) like being involved in sort of that give and take of like oh you know like it it really does so it seems like you found like a sorry go ahead i definitely think that i'm starting to create that community where like there is exchange in all these groups like with each other um but i will say that i feel like i'm more like joining various communities and it's like similar work or similar outcomes but um yeah it's i wouldn't say i'm single-handedly creating that for myself no no yeah yeah yeah. you're seeking it out yeah yeah it's a you know what is it called um 
It's reciprocal. No, no, no. Uh, um, one second. <laughs> it's semantics, right? Yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to clarify because no, I think yeah, that, yeah. um, yeah, like the idea that I am the Genesis creator, right? And you know, yeah, I know yeah, you weren't saying yeah. that, but, but you, I wanted but, to clarify it. But also, yeah. you are the Genesis of your own experience. Of my, yeah, of my work and yeah, my choices. Of your choices, life, you know, you could, life, you, you are lived it's, life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not. I, you're the only artist I've had on here that work, that goes to community centers, and that's an active choice. Mm. You, you're, you're, get, you're, you're right. You're not the center of it because those people would probably no. still be there. Yeah. But, but you, you. It um, it's an interesting perspective that you have because uh, you come off as very sincere and very, very much self possessed in a in a sense that you're not um, you like you. I I just feel like your presence. You know who you are and what you're yeah. into. You know, and and not not everybody like I think a lot. I think that that comes possibly with experience, right? You've been at this for a while. And you're still you're getting shows in galleries, right? So yeah. it's not like you're completely out there, but it seems like like I guess what I'm saying is that it seems healthy because a lot I feel healthy, yeah. Because yeah, a lot of these nicheified communities, they become um, insular, insular and gatekeepy and Very and stuff like and stuff like that. And I don't think that that's the intention, but you do end up places in with places that are like a little waspy. And they don't <laughs> intend to. And for me, that's just redundant because it's like well, it's an art artist run space. Yeah, and it, it, I it mean, conforms to certain other. I can relate to that as far as like running the artist led space. Um, you know, my goal was to have um, uh, Cal State Long Beach alumni or current students, Cal State Long Beach alumni, local Long Beach artists or like adjacent right mm. and it was never to like exclude people but um you know highlight a specific you know it's that weird thing of like yeah i won't get into it but like no but i get what you're you saying you have to have some sort of thematic thing when it i mean you don't have to but i i tried to in the works in the shows that i curated right and it's mm. like there becomes um this thing of like well why didn't you choose these other people it's like well there's ton of like artists in the world like yeah, yeah. and you, you can't know, have all of them one yeah. i'm familiar and invested in this specific artist's work and this person so and i'm familiar with them for various reasons or i think maybe a couple i wasn't like super you know um personable personable with but i was like this work is awesome and it fits the theme and i'm like yo you know, I did like a photo sculpt, like a photo based um, show, but it was like it had sculpture, video, um, resin castings, like a book of like screenshots from the Internet, like um, fiber pieces with like wire, like electrical wire um, mm -hmm. from like c cords and stuff like, you know, it's like it became about the content and the theme. And that's what curators do, you mm -hmm. know, like, I don't know. But um, so you become kind of like exclusionary right but it's not about like um putting people down it's about highlighting someone and mm -hmm. yeah i feel like artist run spaces can can get to like the point where you start like having that elevation thing and that for sure is like i'm not i don't fuck yeah. with that like i haven't yeah. fucked with that and i i don't want to fuck with it yeah <laughs> The thing, the thing that is was surprising to me when I started with the artist run scenes was that how uh, hierarchical even the artist run scene is. You yeah, know, it's it, is. It, it presents itself as very democratic and like and accessible, and to some extent it is, but it's also very much a, a, a small club. You know, like it, it's it, you, it, like, um, I mean, it, it's just again the nature of like community, right? Yeah. Like, and yeah it's it's hard i mean belonging is not just something that magically happens yeah, yeah. um it's for multiple reasons you have the similar values you have similar class yeah. you have and that that stems or you know sprouts the idea of values right like yeah. um which is horrible most of the time <laughs> um but yeah like it's it's it, like a no, I get what you're saying. And it's also it's also hard that element of um like if it, it feels like you actually get to touch and access 
things outside of your class, right? Like, like, yeah. like by 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 virtue of your your decision making process. Oh, you and have you, no idea. I that's go what from I'm saying. Like, but like, as, from like super, and then like, and I'm like, oh, culture shock, like hardcore all the time. But but here's the reality of what I do. Culture shock is that despite despite my best efforts to have as diverse uh, a community of, of mm -hmm. guests on the show i mean i do seek it out right i do try to get people from all different backgrounds and um and one of the common things that ends up happening still is that i don't have that class uh element of like mm -hmm. where i get to p talk to people yeah there are people that have harder and and, and and economic situations right not everybody's at the same place but there is something of a privilege to being an artist yeah where you're 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 basically especially if you're in an artist run context right like you were mentioning you didn't have the money to keep going no with the gallery space like that that gallery doesn't just blossom out of nothing right yeah. like people pay rent for it however yeah. the setup is so so it's a i really think that there's something instructive especially for you know, for like the Gen Z generations that listen to the show and stuff like that, that yeah. about about like you 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 can be an artist and not necessarily be caught up in what people in the art world think about you. You know, yeah. and I mean, I, mean I, I know that I you have a lot of solace in like yes, centering that um, idea and and belief, and I hope that it's not leading people awry, like by s affirming that. Yeah. I think that that's possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean yeah. because a lot of people like you. Okay, you wake up, you decide I'm an artist, right? One day, one day it finally clicks. You may you it clicked for me in Tianjin, China. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Tell <laughs> yeah. me that story. Actually, I, I yeah, I don't have anything that profound to say. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um studied abroad in Tianjin, China, which is like northeast. Um, I think like an hour away from Beijing, mm -hmm. and um, I was there for five, six months. The last month, I spent it with my aunt traveling around the south. Mm -hmm. um, I was the tour guide and I was the one translating with my pocketbook nice. Chinese to English dictionary. You were born in the 90s. You didn't have like an no, iPhone app? No, I, I was born in 1990. 90. <laughs> the cusp. Um, yeah. And does that make we you Gen were, Z or millennial? I'm a millennial. Okay. When does Gen Z start? Do you know? Gen Z is like 93, 97. Okay, cool. I think. I'm Gen X by one year cool <laughs> okay so i can really i'm 80 i'm 10 years oh yeah 10 so years we're, senior yeah we're like you yeah. know the cusp of it yeah and it really you really do straddle it right yeah yeah um, for sure but yeah i studied abroad i was by myself there wasn't a cohort um originally this was after or before during cal state long, during beach, cal state long beach 2012 i applied 2013 spring i went yeah and um something like that I don't remember anymore. It's and right. um, no one's gonna fact check you. <laughs> I was by, I was by myself, and the first month was brutal. I was like, "What did I do? Why did I come here? I'm so alone." And yeah, after the month, I was like, "Cool!" Like, and you know, I just the the city was so like, um, and really, this is like where the the idea of like public space, like the venturing into the themes of public space, and like. Um, social architecture is what I coined mm -hmm. the whole idea of like what my work is about um, about power and control and stuff um, the the area is like really arid and it's really dusty there's a lot of sandstorms and you know there's pollution and stuff too I just um, saw Dune so I'm getting visuals from and, that <laughs> but it's very gray it's not brown okay. um, and I saw these construction workers or people in construction suits working on the streets repaving the streets and um over there in that specific area uh they actually do like different cement blocks mm -hmm. so instead of having to like completely dish out a whole piece of cement like you just replace a block if it's broken oh that makes um, sense or or you don't yeah. have that patchy like tar a tarmac thing yeah, yeah yeah and so or like grass growing out of it it's like okay you just maybe dig up the it stones. It sounds a little bit like cobblestone -y, but like It is, but it's more ed, like more modern. tetra, whatever, like, you know, like tessellation. Tessellation, okay. Yeah, they're like, so um, I saw them working in their like uh, construction attire and I was like, I haven't seen color in so long. Like, <laughs> and you know, I took color theory maybe like 
three, five times okay. if you ca- count uh, figurative painting, right? Which I still think is color theory. Yeah. Especially the way that my teacher taught it. Um, but yeah, I was like so enamored and like, I don't know, it was such a like, a, a th- like, I don't know, what is it called? when uh, like, like a romance to it? Like, yeah, roman- like a romance to it, but just so like out of body or kind of... Um, like a trip. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was so trippy, like just seeing them and just being like, you know. And so I did a painting with like an orange ground and like, I don't know. When I was painting that, I was like tripping out. And yeah, color definitely and that was trip the, out. That like, was the moment that you were like, okay, no, I am an artist. And I, I made that painting and I had done it on my own. Nobody like prompted me. I didn't have a prompt. And, you know, like I was working by myself in the studio shared with um another artist umbo who's in germany who i maybe might see in the summer oh okay Um, shout out yeah and uh he thankfully shared his space with me which i was super grateful for and because i was paint oil painting in my room which i don't oil paint anymore fuck oils um (laughs) and yeah i just ecstasy is the word i was looking for i just had like an ecstasy when i like painted that painting and um, I was like, felt very sure of myself that this is what I wanted to do, that yeah. I was able to do it, had the privilege to do it. And I was like, well, no matter what, this is what I'm going to continue doing and what I enjoy doing. Yeah. And so, you know, definitely went through the phase of like feeling like it was too self-referential and art artist working spaces. And again, no offense. And I'm very much an admirer, supporter and um, yeah, like of artist run spaces yeah Yeah, yeah. and would love to still continue to participate in them too but there's just something about it for me being able to run it like it's just i like the nomadic aspect of things Mm -hmm. more um Mm -hmm. and it's just fucking impossible to do brick and mortar like no financially it's it's just not possible like you really need a good deal and that's hard to come by so um yeah so definitely in the goal goal of owning, owning my own building and and you know directing a space like that but like really like owning the whole place like you know mm. even having like a garden and shit there like <laughs> fuck yeah um but yeah that that was kind of like the time and place where i was like this is what i want to do and since then yeah i've just been like going like yeah i i haven't stopped um so. no it doesn't seem like it. yeah well, what I what I was gonna say before you 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 teased us with with the possibility of an interesting story, which I, oh. I love uh, I I love hearing that moment because it is there 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 is a moment yeah, where you clicks on. Th- there's a moment it happens early or later or whatever, but you're like oh fuck I'm an artist I I put it in those those terms where it's yeah. like oh no like I got this habit <laughs> but but a little bit yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you, you wake up one day and then like you, you're just like, what now? You know, like, what do I do? And so I think that your choices are really interesting, especially because I haven't had this kind of perspective from an artist before on the show. I've done like 200 and no one's ever talked about this. So I props to you for being different. But, and, and again, I want to clarify, I love artists run spaces, Yeah, me too. Uh, but it's a little bit like Instagram where like you can think that it's the whole world and then yeah. and then and then like slowly you start to realize like the artist run space is not even co- a, like a cohesive thing right like yeah. uh, the, that world there's like spaces that don't even know of each other you know so it's honestly it's, it, it's naval, just naval gallery just closed like oh, they really? announced that they're wow. closing and i just learned about them because yeah, yeah. i saw someone post about this artist's work um a couple weeks ago I went to that opening and yeah. And I was like, how cool this space and um, level ground. I was like, I don't know these people. This so sounds so similar to like other parallels that I've yeah. witnessed. And then I'm like, what? This space is closing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why? I just learned about you. No, for sure. For sure. But I do think that it is healthy to have a life outside of the art world as somebody who spent way too much time just yeah, living is. exclusively art, especially because this is kind of work and it's art. So I really think I think that what what you're doing is exemplary because, look, you seem very well adjusted. You seem very confident in your work, which not everybody, not every artist that I talk to is like it really is uh 
instructional to hear something like that because that like after after getting burnt out from being in that bubble yeah i'm starting to look out for that you know and, yeah and and there's always overlaps and stuff but like you it, it, having communities outside of art is pretty healthy because artists are very much all caught up in the same mental traps mm. of the that that the art world kind of imposes on you at every level right yeah. like whether you're a commercial successful artist or, or not like there's always going to be the art world is always going to pressure you i mean i think that um the mediums like of ceramics and printmaking are really the ones that are uh the most self-sustainable as far as artist run spaces adjacent to you know not sh not necessarily just showing ceramics and print making but like they were literally equipped with the community skills needed mm. cuz you share so much of your equipment and yeah, stuff yeah. right but like outside of that like it's really insular it's really individualized and you don't develop those skill sets yeah, in yeah. the studio at school yeah, yeah and um yeah again like i feel like artist run spaces are an extension of school it is a safe space it is a bubble it's not you know if you try to bring your tia tio like you know sibling who has not gone to show not grown up going to shows or like museums or um cultural art spaces or you know like like they're just like what is this these yeah, are yeah. like random objects on the wall and like you took a piece of trash and you what and why are you do you have a collar on your le like on your uh neck and you know just the idea of like <laughs> you have a collar on your neck. <laughs> no that's, that's one of my performances that i want to do if anyone wants to know <laughs> let me know but um, oh cool i like that even more because you weren't pitch. ragging on anybody <laughs> No, yeah, no, you I, that's yourself. mine. But that, yeah, but that is, that's. I'll come for you if you're. Yeah, that's a healthy, my idea. healthy self deprecating. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> attitude. Oh, yeah. oh, see, <laughs> you're already reading into the, what the piece would be. Yeah, I haven't performed it, but I No, the to. way that you talked about it, you were kind of like. Oh, Dismissive? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah no, yeah. definitely. <laughs> but it is, it's so crazy. It's such a but, silly thing. Art is such a silly you know it's it's, a, it's essential arbitrary but it's essential and arbitrary like it's it is you know like you're going to absorb art even even if you're not an art in, in, intense person but then yes. but then it, but that's what's so great about it it is that frivolity of it that mm -hmm. is like you know it's like uh it's a labor protest to some degree especially if you're not making money you're like you're like no 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 my labor for me only you yeah. know for me to express the things that i care yeah. about yeah self-expression yeah. it ultimately is communication yeah. and this is the part where i get really um defensive when people start to be like well that doesn't look like your work and i'm like <laughs> i i can't stand it when people are just like, like projecting their boundaries yeah. like for what my boundaries need to be of my visual literacy i'm just like go fuck yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. no <laughs> yeah. like you don't get to to de delineate for me where i start and end as far as my visual literacy and my capacity to like explore and experiment and um I'm like no and mm -hmm. I, I feel very okay with being defensive about that. Like yeah. I see it as speaking various languages. It's like you say something in Spanish, you say something in German, you say something, you know, there's all these idioms you can't trans directly translate because it, that language has the culture. It has the meaning, the significance, the signifiers. And it's like, don't, don't tell me that I can't yeah. express myself in a specific language versus another just because yeah. you're not used to or familiar with that language and interpreting it because you're the one who has a limited perspective and i'm okay in expressing or experimenting or yeah no it's playing for sure in whatever i want to do so that's I, definitely one of my like mm. your pet peeves <laughs> well just one of my like oh you're starting yeah. to go there like you're on my list <laughs> don't fuck with them yeah. no but you know it's but, also just like not everybody not everybody is like multilingual in that yeah. way right where it's like um they have certain expectations and predictions and i think that's the part that really gets me with like galleries and curators and where it's just like um you know they think you're unpredictable or not predictable enough or not that's not sellable enough or not packageable enough or branded enough mm. 
mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like that is all the stuff that turns me off from yeah, yeah. um the art world and i will say that that's typically common right like a a common thing and so that in from its inception was just like mm, right? not for you not sitting for me well but, i also think it's interesting that you say that because you started in photography. And one of the things that I learned from photography is the limitations of photography. Like photography is a very specific thing. And then there's the art there. There's the photographers that are for photographers. And then there's the artists that use photography. Right. So you start learning that. And then it's somehow like for me, it, it educated me on like, well, this can this object has limitations of what it can and can't do, right? And then I started to think about what other things. So like now I I define as a conceptual artist because if I need to paint, I'm gonna paint. If I need to do a sculpture, I'm yeah. gonna sculpture and and uh you know like the the materials. But I, I think that that, that 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 that's another overlap in, in, in terms of like I feel like photography I feel like a lot of people that start off in photography and then migrate other to other things are doing so because they can't express what they're trying to express in the language of photography. Yeah. I mean, I will say that when I was doing photo and having that opportunity for feedback and critique, that a lot of the stuff that I was doing was more in like the magical realism, mm-hmm. content stuff. Gregory and, Crutzen kind um, of. I'm not too sure what that artist, but like, that's how I would define some stuff that I was trying to do. And it was really like being able to process like personal things that had happened. But, um, I don't think it was really recepted or well recepted. Is that the right term? I I understand what you're saying and I'm not going to correct you because I don't even know (laughs) what you're trying to say. Well taken well taken, well received. Um, like I wasn't getting any like feedback that was just constructive or helpful. And I was just like, oh, this feels so like, am I going anywhere with this? Yeah, like yeah. aimless. And I was like, that doesn't feel good. And so that was also part of the reason why I wanted to shift is because I felt like I needed to learn another language in order to, yeah, I guess what you're yeah. saying. Like, no, no, I, I 100% um, re- relate with everything you've just yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, 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 uh, getting to we're getting time. to where you have you have a heart out today you have to leave it's yeah or, yeah you said 12 like, 12 i think like 10 more minutes no well, that's okay yeah. i mean we I'm basically that's what i'm saying so <clears throat> anything that i have not hit on by asking you just the right question to get out that thing that you wanted to say hmm. uh am i missing anything I mean, I don't know. I, I definitely feel seen. Okay, and, cool. Uh, well, we don't have to go the extra 10 minutes. I'm just saying that, you know, like if yeah. it's if it's done, it's done. The episode is done when it's done. Yeah. I mean, I definitely <laughs> as as... got the chills a couple times. Cool. And I'm very excited. And re- hopefully get to reflect later on what that was <laughs> because I feel like, um, I yeah, like this last year, you know, I was part, l- luckily part of the Sir Biennial shout out to Jorge Mujica and Ichiro, who um, jumped me into the Sir Biennial. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like, that was really cool because I, I don't know, I felt like that was a point where, like, I felt like I made it as far mm-hmm. as, like, okay, this is um, artist run spaces, this is community colleges, which are very much about access to the arts. Um, this is about regional, like, Southern California. Um, this is the inception of it was in 562 like norwalk uh rio hondo community college like the whittier area and um latinx focused usually mm-hmm. usually i think it does incorporate other artists from different backgrounds but um, ichido does not sound latinx yeah <laughs> um i don't know all of ichido's background okay. but no, no, i'm just he does speak spanish okay um, well then he may be he may be i'm not sure and I'm, yeah, you never know. I'm not it could have been an, him. an assumption. <laughs> but um but yeah, I I felt like I had made it in the sense of like my um hierarchy of values and um things that make me feel seen or make me feel affirmed, right? And yeah. it's like those were all like check marks, um check boxes. Boxes that were checked. I don't know. I'm Bucket really list. bad at idioms. Um, <laughs> but they're charming when they come out that way. <laughs> they're, I want, what I wanted to say is like, yeah, checking off boxes um, for me of like my hierarchy of values and stuff. And um, I don't know. I think that if I had any advice to give out to you were saying like Gen Z 
or even Gen X getting started. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Like, you know, um, anybody. it's just anybody. Yeah. Like it's really identifying what, what is valuable to you and, um, finding people that share those same values. And if you don't have that opportunity, don't compromise your values. Cause yeah. ultimately like, what is the purpose of doing all this stuff? If you're constantly compromising, what feels good to you? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's definitely what I would, some advice I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I try mean, to do that. Yeah. I mean, um, it's your labor, right? You yeah. do with it what you want. Yeah. And even if that means like you're just making watercolors for yourself in your sketchbook and don't show anybody like sick. <laughs> DM you, me and show me your watercolor sketches. Yeah, if you're if you're your own audience, you're still an audience. Yeah, I mean, really, like, yeah. ultimately, what what would be the purpose of making it? Like, mm -hmm. if you don't enjoy it. Yeah. Well, cool. Mm -hmm. I uh, I really appreciate you coming in, and uh, you know, like like I said, artist run spaces are just a part of the of the game, and I think that it's really good to be involved with them and then also yeah. have a foot outside of them for perspective because yeah. they're they're great resources they're amazing things uh but it's like if all you do is eat sleep and breathe art it might it might drive you insane <laughs> which i've stumbled upon so but yeah yeah and uh and y you know uh i look forward to seeing what else you do next because it, it, it looks you. like it likes it looks like you're a, it sounds like you're a facilitator as well which i i yeah. really appreciate uh i have know. a mural um yeah we can play. getting started uh mid-april from like 14th to the 22nd technically the 12th to the 23rd but i'm not sure which days are really public um uh, at cal state fullerton so oh, okay. i'm doing a mural there i'm one of four artists i believe is doing a mural um part of the human sci sciences and sociology and sciences hss mm -hmm. um department so that's gonna be fun that's awesome congratulations yeah. on that and Thank then where you. can it, people find you um, Instagram at desfigurados, D-E-S-F-I-G-U-R-A-D-O-S. -S um, yeah. Disfigured. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think yeah. that's one of the things that Faceless. I... Faceless. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I hope we'll be in touch and, and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely keep a track of when you have shows. I, you. I wanted to go to your thing, but I have been sick and um, I'm just so... April 17th, I'm, it's a Wednesday, I'm giving a um, portrait workshop. This is going to be a little bit different than what I'm used to because I'm going to have a live model mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get some Masonite, a heavy duty easel and um, some Lennox paper to do like a full on four by eight in front mm -hmm. of people, but we'll see. Um, P painting from photos and painting it from real life is very different. And yeah. I've done it, you know, yeah, yeah. but it's definitely been a minute. So I feel like I need to do some self portraits to practice. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm going to do some self portraits, right? This yeah. is good. I'm glad I said this. <laughs> no, I'm trying to do uh, what's it called? L uh, l uh, live streams where I draw, and I'm like, oh man, I'm so rusty. I should probably <laughs> do some practicing first. I cannot do live streams. Although, although I am pretty cocky because, like, I. I drew that there's a I have a drawing of a cat Aww. I drew that in like one Cute. afternoon with a deadline and I was like so cocky about cool. it I was like I know how to do it you know like it's fun to have skills that you know that you don't use very <laughs> yes. often but you know you know are there yeah no that's good thank you like um all right well and uh we'll be back oh and you guys don't forget to like and subscribe uh rate us on uh your podcasting platforms we need the help and we appreciate welcome it. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> welcome to the channel. Leave us comments if you have any, if I said anything that was upsetting. No, <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding. I no, would like I to know. I don't want negative comments. Uh, just say nice things to me in the comments. Say uh, nice things to him uh, yeah. and me. <laughs> and we'll be back next Yoroshiku week. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Be nice to me. <laughs> Is that what that means? <laughs> in, in Japanese, yeah. <laughs> cool. I should learn that. Uh, and then uh, we'll be back next week with another guest and another topic that may or may not be art related.